Hello everyone, Reza here and in this session I'm, gonna, I'm going to show you how to apply a bump map or a normal map or a displacement map to your object. We've already covered what those maps are so it must be kind of easy for you to kind of have a look at the workflow, learn the implementation and add those to your model. Well, first one on the list is a um, bump map. So it's a grayscale map. Uh, I've got a standard uh, 2 here and it's not hasn't been renamed which is bad practice from my end. You make sure that you have everything named, right click on it, AI standard surface 2. Um, in order to get that to work obviously I need to find uh, a pattern for my bump map. As you already should know Bump maps are grayscale maps, so um, there is no RGB value, and unlike displacement maps, they technically don't alter the silhouette of your geometry. They're fake, uh, and because of that, rendering them is fairly quick. So this is the bump map that I have. It's just a, a simple texture that I'll be using for this example. So uh, let's bring the texture over. I'm going to press tab, type in file, bring in my file. Don't forget to rename these nodes, otherwise it gets out of control. I'm just going to go to my um, source images and I've got one for bump, one for normal, one for displacement. I'm going to start with that. Now, you cannot just drag and drop or connect it to your bump map slot, which is here, geometry, bump map. You cannot just directly assign it here. You have to have a middleman, a bridge. Simply type in bump 2D here. I'm going to zoom in a little so you guys can see better. Perfect. So it's a grayscale color, so having out color really doesn't do much, doesn't make any sense because it's a grayscale color and it, there is uh, literally no. RGB combine, you can use either R or G or B to connect that to your bump value and from out into normal camera. And that normal camera is actually, if I look or click on the AI standard, is actually your bump map. Now, so you can see what happens when you don't rename, it just puts in file six, which is too vague for my taste, but uh, beside the point. Uh, that's how you that's how you connect your bump map. If I click on it on the um, IPR button to see the result. I can see the bump map appears. Now if you click here and go one out, this is out, this is in. Um, so if you go click on it, go out, or you can click on that bump node alternatively, uh, you can see that we have bump value. And that bump value kind of intensifies the strength of the bump. Don't go too uh, high on that. So if you go too high, then what you see is sort of an artifact that may happen or you know, the, the Maya freaks out. Uh, so usually I keep it around the value of one to two. And if there's any problem, I go and fine tune the texture rather than playing around with, uh, with these attributes. So that is uh, just as simple as that. That's how you apply a bump map to your model. Now let's talk about normal map. So I'm going to disconnect the bump map here and here, put that bump map aside. I'm going to use the same file node. This time I'm going to use a normal map and this is a normal map color. Um, basically what you see is a, a colored image. It's a RGB image. This time I'm just going to rename it. It's really too hard, too difficult to resist that one. So um, 
Now, because it's a colored map, I'm not going to use RGNB. I'm going to use the combination of the two or three and use the actual out color. But again, I need a middleman. Uh, this one is AI normal, normal map. Now, out color goes to input. Uh, now, the easy part, just going to disconnect that for now. The easy part, out value goes in here. Uh, and there you have it. That's the normal map pattern that we're talking about. It's easy as that. We have strength to just, you know, how much intensity you want for this particular uh, map and you can see because it's color that it's RGB uh, It's just not black and white. It comes with more Information as a result of that it gives you more detailed Raised pushed areas if you want so you usually use that for really fine Tweaks or really small details like wrinkles on the skin something like that. So That's uh, that's how you apply normal map now, in order to show displacement map, I better just uh, practice it on a much simpler model. So, um, I just paused the video and created a simple cube. I was not kidding when I said a simple object, literally a cube. And if you can apply displacement map on a rigid cube with, no, with absolutely no resolution or loop, then you can pretty much apply it to anything. Now, the, the trick with displacement map is because it alters the actual surface, you need resolution, you need subdivision. Well, it's not too easy to just go and um, alter the actual geometry using classic modeling tools because then it messes up your UV mapping. It may not be in the pipeline. It may create restriction for you. It may slow down your scene. There's so many problems that can, can tag along. Uh, there's another way to do that, and that is through a subdivision tab in Maya. So um, if I create a utility map, a utility node, uh, just to demonstrate how it affects, I'm just going to turn off the IPR. We don't need it how it affects uh, the geometry. I'm just going to apply it really quick. Right click, assign to material, and then go into a utility, set this one to Lambert and this one to uh, polygon wireframe. This is just to show you the wireframe. That's what the, the node does. It just literally shows you the wireframe. Now, um, it helps because I'm about to show you how to add subdivision and of course this node is, is basically is capable of showing this to you. If you go to the shape node of the model that you have under Arnold subdivision, you can actually turn on the subdivision. I'm going to set it to linear. You can set it to Cadmo Clark. It rounds or smooths your scene, your object. I'm going to set it to linear. As soon as you set the iteration to one, then it divides that face into four faces. So multiplies by four, and if I set it to two, then you get eight, 16, so on and so forth. So you can actually increase that to a significant amount and see how dense this looks now. Um, and the cool part of it, there is no uh, physical alteration. Uh, we didn't really amend um, the model in any way is just there. We do it through its shape node, which is great. Now, the model has got enough subdivision to be changed. So what I can do, I'm going to stop the IPR, select the model. Now I'm going to right click on the iCube and assign that to my material, to my cube. Uh, I'm going to delete AI utility. Don't need it anymore. Obviously, tap, bring the file in. The file that I picked is a this is a simple brick node. So that's the brick node displacement map. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, now again, we need a middleman here, 
and that middleman is called displacement. Now, unlike normal map and bob map, it doesn't go here. We have a slot for displacement shader here. So if I just type in called displacement shader, very straightforward, it comes with its own shading group, but we already have one. We don't need it. So what I can do, we can I can unplug it and then plug it to my own shader, get rid of the one that we don't need. Um, now in here, it's very easy, from out color to displacement, oops, oh, the reason, <laughs> I'm glad it happened, the reason that it doesn't accept it because it is not a colored map, it's a black and white map, so you have to expand it and use one of these channels instead of this one, so displacement goes to, I usually pick R, go to that, here you go. Um, now, a disclaimer, as soon as I render you see something really ugly, probably. Um, you, yeah, well, you can see that. Uh, you may say it kind of didn't work. Yes, it did work. You need to just make a few changes. Usually, there are two things that you need to do. I'm going to expand Arnold. And this is, uh, you get that when you select displacement shader node in the outliner. Um, I'm just going to pause IPR. I feel like my computer is slowing down a little. So if I can bring my cursor to it, it would be great. There you go. All right, fantastic. So scale, the normal default value is way too high. I usually set it to one tenth of whatever value you have. Uh, and then another one is under Arnold subsection, you want to give it some padding. Um, so you can actually see some raised areas. So uh, maybe point 0.2 should do it. Uh, now if I render, I'm just gonna zoom back a little. Now if I render, there you go. You see something, it's more like it, uh, that works. And the beauty of it is now, unlike normal map or bum map, because they're fake, you actually see uh, Maya is altering the shape of uh, the, the, the contour of your model, which is great. So um, this is a really uh, efficient way of uh, changing uh, your model. This is something that Arnold showcases. So this is not a, a modeling showcase. It is actually done via a very clean complex displacement map. So you can see that you can literally mo model, well in advanced level, uh, without modeling using just um, a clean displacement map. It's very effective. All right, I hope you learned a thing or two. Um, if you have any questions, send them my way. Other than that, uh, it's a wrap for today. Uh, it was rather a quick tutorial. Um, and feel free to use these techniques in your own projects. See you next time. Thank you. Bye.